Well, welcome. In this set of notes, we're going to be talking about implicit differentiation from section 3.7. We're definitely going to be discussing that and thoroughly going through how to find derivatives implicitly. And if we have time, we'll get into from section 3.9, just kind of an extra type of differentiation process. We don't see it a lot, but it's called logarithmic differentiation. And then the third one from section 3.6 that we haven't really covered yet would be differentiation if the curve is defined parametrically. So, uh, but back to the implicit differentiation, uh, we've got um, an example down here where there's just a curve, and that curve can be defined in terms of x and y. Uh, and anywhere along the curve, as long as that part of the curve is smooth like we see here, we can draw easily draw a tangent line. It doesn't have to be a function to draw a tangent line to the curve. But any tangent line, besides the vertical ones, is going to have a slope. And the slope of a tangent line is still referred to as the derivative at that particular point. Now keep in mind that um, that's exactly what we're going to be doing, is finding the slope of the tangent line at a particular point. And when y is defined explicitly in terms of x, then we just differentiate the right side and we find the, the derivative explicitly because y is explicitly defined in terms of x. Okay, so none of that really is going to matter yet. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So we're going to start with this example here, x times y equals 1. We're going to find y prime in two ways. First way is to solve for y, and then the second way is to, do, to use implicit differentiation. So implicit, implicit, no, that's not implicit, implicitly, okay, and we'll get to that in the next uh, slide. So implicitly is part B, but for part A, we're going to solve it the same way we would solve any of the other ones that we've ever done. Solving for Y, we get Y equals 1 over X by dividing both sides by X, but you can't divide by X if X is 0, so we say that Y is equal to 1 over X when X is not equal to 0. And we should know what that looks like. We should be familiar with the graph y equals 1 over x. Looks like that. Okay, and so we easily could see that, yeah, okay, we're going to have tangent lines anywhere around here. Uh, and they're at different places along the graph. We're going to have a slope of a tangent line. So we know we can use the, um, the uh, power rule if we write it like this, y equals x to the negative 1. And we have y prime is equal to negative 1x times x to the negative 1 minus 1, or x to the negative 2. And if we write it with positive exponents, we get just negative 1 over x squared. Okay, fine. So that means that, let's say we choose a point along the curve here, uh, let's say 1, 1. Okay, so at 1, 1, what's the slope there? Well, the slope there is of the tangent line. Okay, slope of the tangent line there would be equal to negative 1 over 1 squared, which is negative 1. Okay, so we know the slope right there is negative 1, and as x changes, so does the slope. All right, so we already know that. The next way we're going to find the slope, or find y prime, is by, uh, by, re by leaving the equation in the same form that it's in. Okay, however, let's recall from the first part of the solution that if we could solve for y, then we'll get y as a function of x. In other words, if we could solve for y as we could in this case, but, won't, but we won't always be able to do that, we would get y equaling some function of x, y equal y of x, okay? And again, I'm just writing it that way so that it would remind you to, uh, or that y is some function of x, okay? So we haven't really done that before, but this shouldn't be too much of a stretch x times y of x is equal to 1. Okay, so be careful here and note that when we write y of x, we don't mean y times x, okay? y of x not equal to y times x, all right? It means y of x. We're noting here that y is some probably unknown function of x, and this is important to recall when doing this solution technique, okay? So the next step in the solution is to differentiate both sides with respect to x as follows. Okay, so we're going to take, uh, we're going to ddx both sides. ddx is a verb, ddx both sides. Okay, and the derivative of the left side, noting that here we have the derivative of the product of two functions. Okay, 
And you know, we've got to recognize that we've actually got a product here, the x and the y of x. Okay, so to do the derivative of the left side, we'll need to do the product rule. Okay, doing this gives the derivative of the first function, derivative of the x is 1, multiplied by the y of x, okay, plus the, oh, sorry, sorry, no, no, I'm good. <laughs> so the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative, the d dx, of the second. Okay, equaling the derivative of the right side is easy because it's just the derivative of a constant, and so we say the derivative of one then is zero. All right, and then now recall that we have the following notational way of writing the derivative. Okay, so we're just going to go off to the side here and remind ourselves that um, that uh, d dx of y of x. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page here, is equal to another way of writing that is dy dx, okay, and then dy dx, we can write that as y prime, okay, using, using that notation, and it's just a simpler way of writing it, uh, we get y, let me get back to green here, we get y, so y of x is just, y, we're going to just call it y, no, we drop that, and just to remind us that we had that x on there just to remind us that y was a function of x. But now we can drop that, and then we get y plus x times y prime is equal to 0. Okay. So now let's recall what we were after. We were after the derivative y prime, and notice that there is now a y prime in the equation. So to get the derivative, all we need to do is solve the equation for y prime. Again, y prime is the derivative. Okay, and that's what we're looking for. Okay, that's what we want to isolate. So to do that, we're going to be subtracting y from both sides. And once we subtract y from both sides, we get xy prime is equal to the opposite of y. And then when we divide both sides by x, again, x can't be 0. We noted that in the beginning. We get that y prime is equal to negative y over x. Well, that's interesting because in the last... In part A, we got y prime is equal to negative 1 over x squared. Okay. Well, now we get y prime equals negative y over x. Okay. Well, what's the deal? Well, they're, guess what? They're both right. And we want to confirm that they're both right. Uh, and to confirming that they're both right, Let's, um, let's take a look at that same example that we used to see what the derivative was when, remember this back here, when x is equal to 1, okay, when x was equal to 1, the derivative was negative 1, okay, so when x is 1, the y prime is equal to negative, oh, what happened there, hold on. My uh, screen went funky on me. So the y prime is negative 1, well let's advance over here. When x is 1, we again, we know that the y is 1, okay, when x is 1. It's the same graph. And then what's the y prime? Well, the y prime, remember, is negative y over x, and so we get negative y, which is 1, over x, which is also 1. So, again, we get negative 1, and that's exactly what we got the first time. We got it a different way, but nevertheless, guys, uh, that's exactly the same answer. It's, it's exactly the same, and that'll work with any value of x and y you plug in to either one. So that's one way to, um, to do the problem, and it, it's going to be more obvious when, that you have to do it this way when you get problems like this. So let's do one more, and uh, I would urge you to, um, to go ahead and, and pause the video once I write the problem down and see if you can get this one on your own. So we're going to figure out if we look at this uh, circle we should know, recognize that that's a circle that has radius 1 and what I want you to do is I want you to find the uh, let's say we want to find the slope of the tangent line when x is equal to um, gosh I don't know what radical 3 over 2 because we have a unit circle here and if x is radical 3 over 2 we have the uh, y is 1 half and so confirming that that works radical 3 over 2 squared plus 1 half squared does that equal 1 just confirming 
Uh, radical 3 over 2 squared is 3 over 4, plus 1 half squared is 1 over 4, and that does equal 1. So uh, that checks out. Apologize, I had to pause the video there. Uh, you didn't realize that maybe, but uh, just in case I start talking about something different, I um, I don't remember what exactly I was talking about, but uh, I know that I confirmed that the, this point was on the curve, and again, what we're looking for is the slope at that point. So we want to know what's the slope there. Well, to find the slope, we have to find the derivative. So let's get back to x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now notice, we could solve for y here, but that becomes a problem because we uh, would get a positive square root and a negative square root, and then we, anyway, we, this is much more convenient to be able to, to uh, find the derivative of this function, or I should say, finding y prime, finding the slope of the tangent line, implicitly, okay? So the process of implicit differentiation, again, would be to take the derivative of both sides, and we're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. Okay. On the right side, it's nice when it's a constant. The derivative of x squared. Okay, let's think about that. The derivative of x squared is 2x. Okay, no problem. Um, let's do this, though. Let's write it like this. The derivative, the d dx. We're going to d dx the y squared. But let's write it as y of x squared. So that reminds us that we have to use the... Uh, the chain rule here. You know, it's a good reminder because sometimes you see y squared and you think, oh, it's just 2y because, well, x squared is 2x. Well, um, it's a good thing to think of, but uh, it's not true. D, uh, d dx of y of x squared, we have to use, again, have to use a chain rule. Okay, so let's do that. Um, the derivative of the 1 is 0, so we've got that taken care of. Now, 2x plus, again, the d dx of this guy here, and this guy meaning the y of x squared, we're going to bring the 2 out in front, multiplied by what's inside, okay, to the first power, multiplied by the derivative of what's inside, okay. And so given that, now we're going to just drop the of x part. So we have 2x plus 2y prime. Oh, that's not y prime, is it? Oh, we've got to be careful. I'd be really careful because that one right there is y to the first power. So we're going to just erase that. That's 2y to the first power. I shouldn't have even written that. Let me not even write that. And then multiply by y prime of x. So that's times y prime is equal to 0. Okay. If we divide both sides by 2, we get to get rid of those 2s. If we subtract x from both sides, running out of room here, we get y times y prime. Okay, is equal to the opposite of x, and therefore we get y prime is equal to negative x over y. Okay. Now, if you're if you're uh, thinking along the lines of wow, that's a uh, pi over six, the angle pi over six. If you're, well, I'm looking at a try to find a quicker way of finding y prime. So let me do this. Let me uh, circle this and let's go right up here. So we know that y prime, okay, y prime is equal to negative x over y. And we want y prime when x is equal to radical 3 over 2. Noticing here that y prime is also, again, equal to both, is some function of x and y. And then uh, we want, again, the, the y prime at this particular point, okay. And so we get negative x which is negative radical 3 over 2, over y, which is 1 half. And uh, negative x over y, yeah. So we get, um, let's see, we can multiply top and bottom by 2. Let me do that in red. Multiply top and bottom by 2. And the 2's are going to cancel, and we just get negative radical 3. I was trying to think of a way to do this. Um, really, it's the y prime is the cotangent, x over y. Ah, forget it. We're just going to leave it like that. So negative radical 3 is the slope of the tangent line to this curve, to the circle, at, those, uh, at that point. And I'm right here at just below my 15 minute mark, so I'm going to sign off. See you in the next video. There is one more.